one. Welcome in to the latest episode of Betting the Pitch presents the Need for Seeds College Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Real Underscore G Warner, joined by my co-host at Big East Ben and his dad uh, at uh, MUWarrior84 on Twitter. Or I'm, maybe I'm not supposed to, to give that out to the people, but thank at, you. At Marquette84. Marquette 84. Thank you, Michael Ulrich, for coming in. Uh, this is going to be a big day. I'm so happy we've been waiting for this day for a long time. And uh, I'd like you to start this episode. Welcome in, Big East Ben. But I'd, I'd rather hear from your dad and to hear about his experience at Madison Garden uh, for the Big East tournament. Well, first of all, can I just say I, I think you two guys do a terrific job. Uh, I've been watching you faithfully. At first, I thought, yeah, I, I don't know if this is really going to work. But in all honesty, it works. Um, I look forward to the broadcast. Um, you guys get better every single time. And uh, I I think the future is wide open for you guys to go maybe national. Great. We're looking international, but thank you so much. We appreciate that, that comment. Got it. Finally, your son got a microphone that allows him to record and it doesn't sound like a robot. So uh, tell us about your day today. I, I know you had uh, a couple concerns with Jane's breeding, a, a very famous Big East official or just national official in general. You know, it's uh, five years ago, uh, late game at the Big East tournament, Marquette versus Seton Hall. And uh, that was a game that got out of control. Uh, Marquette, I think, lost three guys thrown out of the game by uh, the ref. Um, Seton Hall won that game. It, it was just a nightmare. So tonight, looking forward to uh, the game, and I looked at the crew, and I just thought, oh, my, we're going to be in for a long night. And we were in for a long night because uh, the game appeared to be a Marquette victory at the buzzer, uh, a, a terrific pass by Oso to a cutting uh Cam Jones, he got it off. It went in, and the place erupted. And breeding and Brian O'Connor went O'Connell went over to, to look at the screen, and they were on it for a long time, mm. and uh, they 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 called it off. Um, it was just it it was a very interesting um crowd because it followed on the heels of the Providence Creighton game, which was phenomenal. And that place was rocking. Mm -hmm. And the first half of the Marquette Nova game, both teams were just not energized. And the whole arena was sitting on their hands. Um, so it, it was just, it was tough to watch this team without their quarterback again, uh, orchestrating things. Their and quarterback, uh, Tyler Kolick. Yeah, being okay. Tyler Kolick, and he was there, obviously supporting the team. Uh, but they got they gutted it out. I mean, I I will say that I know Ben uh, was somewhat critical of my uh, negativity tonight, but I I was really concerned about what I perceived to be low energy. Um, I you know I I was wondering if they were thinking about hey we'll 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 show up for one game. Uh, be done, go back to Milwaukee and get ready for the tournament. Kind of kind of borrowing that whole let's rest Tyler Kolek. Um, maybe we should rest. Because with Creighton losing, I think their two seed was probably somewhat solidified. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, anyhow. Uh, A couple wrong bounces and they're down to the five seed line, according to Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> you never know how that ball bounces, you know? <laughs> But uh, Shaka, I have to, I have to say, Shaka, he he was energized throughout the game as he always is, and that that play um, that he orchestrated that was waved off, um, getting the ball down court was phenomenal. They had to go the full length of court. They had two point eight seconds. They threw the ball past half court. O Oso caught it, quickly called timeout. And they had two and a half seconds left to get that last shot off. Um, so that was really, really good. Um, I, I've rarely seen that done by a coach. Let's call a quick timeout when there's under three seconds. Now, now that you're mentioning it, I think that's what he tried to do in the loss against Wisconsin last year. Because I think they tried that twice. 
Yeah. And it got, and we were just like, what the heck are you doing? Um, just baseball in pass and we have time to like get it up the court dribble and, you know, take a heave. Right. And that must've been what he was doing. He, he executed it to perfection. When uh, the ball leaves Jones's hand, it, you know, I, I thought it was good. I, I thought it was good. And then they're showing the replay and I'm like, I don't know. And it reminded me a lot of the Hauser shot in the Craven right. game uh, two, two or three years ago um, where it was inconclusive. Were they, were they showing the replay on the Jumbotron and were fans? Oh, no. No? No. Madison Square Garden is smart. There were cert- the, the so-called controversial plays. They do not show those. And, gotcha. and I understand that. I, I think that... Um, um, you know, that's not you understand that. Hold on. I just want to make sure you understand that. So you, as a, someone who pays a lot of money to go to a game, you should see less of what happened in the game that you're attending, that you're paying money for when these random people that are paying for like the food network are at home on TV, (laughs) better angle than you are. I just want to make sure. Did I hear you? I, I think, I think the arena does it purely for, let's keep the crowd as calm as we can mm-hmm. uh, because if they would keep showing that sort of a replay and if it was really, really a questionable call, at least 50% of the fan base, you know, that being the Marquette fan base probably would have um, really gone through the ceiling. I mean, I, agree. I understand we're trying to keep auntie Steph off the crowd, uh, off the court, screaming out, ring out a Hoya. I get it. But uh, at this point in the season, I feel like, <laughs> We deserve better. Um, so great, great. Thank you to hear about that. I mean, awesome to see uh, Marquette moving on to face Providence and Providence are, are in a really big predicament where they got a Creighton victory, uh, which is their second of the season. They beat them at home uh, in overtime, at least their second. I don't think they won at Omaha, but then they get a really good opportunity against Marquette, which you're kind of h- hinting uh, big Mike that, that maybe, Marquette are not as interested in this game as as we would potentially expect. Providence is hungry, rightfully so. And I tell you, the, the way they have played the past two nights, uh, they're they're looking really, really good. Um, Carter is playing out of control. Um, he was supported by a lot of his teammates tonight. The fan base, a lot of Providence fans were there tonight, and I trust that they're going to be back in that place tomorrow. It'll definitely be a pro Providence crowd. Um, so the momentum's on their side. Marquette, I think deep down though, has that attitude of, well, looky, looky, what we did tonight. Maybe we will have a chance to go up against, we assume, UConn for the championship. So let's push it. Who knows? I do hope that they come out a lot more energized than they did tonight because if they don't, Providence can blow them up by 15 points. Interesting. I, I don't know that I would expect to hear that from at Big East Ben, the, the Marquette Homer on the podcast. Um, uh, if I'm making Marquette a four point favorite, because uh, we don't have a line yet for uh, the game tomorrow, uh, considering Marquette was a four point favorite or so to, to Villanova tonight. Uh, what do you think about that? That spread. At Big East Ben, what do you think about that spread? Uh, I I got I got to go with my guys. I mean, they had a very comfortable uh, six point victory. I, I, I don't I don't agree with my dad that to a certain extent that they were like weren't trying and packing it in. I mean, the lack of looks to Oso were bizarre and something I didn't understand. It, it's almost as like Shaka took like a deep film study of the last three games and just said like. Hey, the looks that Oso was getting with Kolek running the show are not there anymore. And given those lack of looks, and now that he's getting like lower percentage looks, like you don't want to force it. You don't want to force the Oso ISO drive baby hook. He had the great one at the end of the game. Um, but th- that's my only explanation because he he scored his first point, Griffin. He scored his first point with three minutes left in the game. Um right. So I it, it's it's tough I like I don't I don't want to lay off lay off the game. Um, I think it's gonna be a slugfest. I'd like to see what the under is, um, because I think it's gonna be an absolute battle again tomorrow with just two with a Providence you know offense that 
has been really bad at times and a team that leans on our defense against a great offense without their floor general. Yeah, I think under makes sense. Um, I, when I delivered that number of Marquette minus four to you, I, that feels a little low to me. I'm thinking it's, it's bigger than that. Even after uh, you could argue a, a struggling performance tonight, I did not watch the second of the game. I was at the big 12 tournament, which had a bunch of blowouts today. And uh, that was really exceptional fun for me, especially considering I'd bet the, the favorite in the opener beat the closing line by two points and then saw BYU. I showed up to the game. It was 12 to Texas tech. I was like, okay, you know, rough start, whatever. We'll figure this out soon enough. But uh, that was ugly. And then I was there for a TCU that made missed their first 15 shots of the game uh, at least. Cause I was uh, at a, some sort of TV timeout, taking a picture of it for a friend of mine that went to TCU just about, make- about yeah. half those games had double digit run like BYU yesterday against UCF was 14 nothing 12 2 uh 15 like these games have been over in a heartbeat yeah well uh you know i uh, can't really sell the tickets that i bought already so i'm here i uh i have a beautiful uh Kansas City landscape behind me on some brick fucking excuse my friend whatever this is uh, so I'm making the best of it. Tomorrow's going to be legit. Uh, I got to say takeaways from today, um, a lot of blowouts, but uh, Iowa State, I mean, I've heard some rumors in this town for a Big 12 tournament weekend that Iowa State will drink this town out of Bush Light, Natty Light, whatever light uh, swag beer is available. And uh, I believe it because that place was LIT lit tonight. And I'm very much looking forward to the semifinals tomorrow. Uh, all the top seeds advance. So we got Houston against Texas Tech, uh, probably a gigantic spread favoring Houston. And then uh, Iowa State and Baylor, probably around one to two type of spread. And we'll potentially get to that later in this episode. Uh, Big Mike uh, Mar- at Marquette 84 will stick with us for a best bet coming end of show. But it's time to get into our, our games. We're going to give us be- uh, picks on each of these games, plus also best bet from at Big East Ben, myself, and uh, at the Real and Georgie Warner, and of course at Marquette 84. Um, and if you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out, patreon.com slash real and score G Warner. And if you are not following us on uh, YouTube, please hit it at the real and score G Warner on YouTube. Plus, we got plenty of content coming out on betting the pitch on YouTube, uh, on Apple Podcasts, and on Spotify. Leave a five star review, it's huge for our search rankings. So, uh, at Big East Ben, do you want to tell us where we're going for our first game? Yeah, so we are going to go to the SEC, uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Uh, taking on the Auburn Tigers, the line is seven and a half. Hmm. Uh, do you have first? Let's start with that Marquette eighty four. Uh, do you have any any opinions on South Carolina or Auburn? You're you're totally okay to pass, and we'll get into it. He is a big time Bruce Pearl hater, so I'm oh, curious to hear even, his even better. Hate. I'm sure he's really upset about his uh point shaving uh, uh complications or uh whatever they were at Boston College back in the day. Was it? Well, Bruce Pearl, that was the Illinois thing, right? Well, there's an Illinois thing, but I think he was related to the Boston College program that was doing point shaving as well. As the mascot? I'm not sure what he was. He probably had shirts off for the boys at that point as well, (laughs) uh, supporting Pat Summit. Maybe maybe we'll uh, get away from that because I don't know what I'm talking about. And we'll just go South Carolina, a seven and a half point underdog against an Auburn team, which honestly, so they had second shortest odds to win. So so second most likely to win the SEC tournament, despite being on the same side of the bracket as Tennessee. That seems really, really questionable to me. Um, so so at Marquette 84, uh, what do you think about this matchup? Um, I like South Carolina. There we go. Seven and a half. There we have it. Uh, at Big East Ben, uh, do you want to? Uh, agree with I agree with my dad. Uh, South Carolina has not got, gotten blown out by any team this year except Auburn. But again, that was at the jungle on a Wednesday night game. Auburn was absolutely cooking then. This team is still big time frauds. Which still team? Still one, one win? Which team, one? which team is big team? Big time frauds? Auburn. Okay. St- I they I think they still have one more quad one win than the three of us can buy uh, this Auburn team. Um, so total frauds are going to be a four seed. I'm going to bet there no chance they're making the second weekend of this uh, of the tournament next week. No way they're making till Saturday of the SEC in Nashville. I like the Gamecocks. 
Yeah, so this is a hard thing for me to hear because I, I bet South Carolina on their visit to Auburn. Auburn shot, I think, 63% from three that night. Um, unfortunately, these terrible memories are just etched in my brain at this point. Uh, but Shot Quality, one of our sponsors as well. Check out shotqualitybets.com. Use the promo code GW. You get uh, a, a savings for your first month if you want to get some extra data before you get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, but it was a, a game that Shot Quality said that South Carolina should have won, actually, and they lost by 40. So that, I don't well, know. Seriously? That I game? Don't to, I don't know how to explain that necessarily, <laughs> but um, incredible. Um, based on, I, I think the, the premise is that Auburn got – a lot of really bad shots they made and uh, good for them, I guess. Um, not good for me that night, but I'm a believer in South Carolina as well. I feel like they don't have the beautiful type of uh, ambiance. They don't have the the bloody shoes. They just simply are out there playing basketball and they're a, a, a deep team with a lot of uh, unheralded recruits and uh, a really I think talented coach that's going to do very well at South Carolina as they move forward with a really great women's team as well uh, so I like the seven and a half as well and also Lamont Paris signed an extension either today or yesterday so that team's unified yes because when you sign your coach an extension as I mean then again Ohio State if you fire one you start winning so uh, I don't know about that necessarily but I'll take it welcome to the Big East Chris Holtman yeah I I was going to save that for a, a news break end of show, but okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, since, since we're here now, uh, welcome Chris Holman back to the big East. Uh, he was a former Butler coach, went to Ohio state and didn't really have a great time, but somehow saved a job multiple years. Now he's going to run DePaul to the top of the big East coming forward. So for our next game, where are we going? Uh, we are going to, we're going to go to the big East. Dad. We're going to Madison Square garden. We got St. John's. Uh, taking on a really underrated, underdog, unheralded UConn team. Mm, what, I can't get anyone's like? respect these days. And we have a nine and a half point spread total at 146 and a half points. Uh, St. John's with an incredible cover, at least in the first half, because I was watching that sitting in the arena at the Big 12 tournament, watching my uh, Seton Hall plus two die in. Uh, a thousand fires right at the end with a contested two made by Soriano and then a foul at the buzzer, uh, not called for uh, no free throws for Seton Hall. And then things went haywire in the second half. I, thought, I mean, at this point, I, I can't really argue with how well St. John's has been playing. I guess all it took was Rick Pitino to literally shred his entire team and tell them they can't move laterally um what do we think about st john's a nine and a half point underdog because i don't think they're in the tournament right now it seems like a lot of the bracketologists out there believe they are already um do you think they're in at marquette 84 at this point i think they're in at biggie spend do you think they're in yeah but i mean i i think this this little run they're on is a little smoke and mirrors i mean you have the win against Georgetown. You have the white suit game against Creighton. Big win. Um, and then you beat the Paul Butler to Georgetown and now Cena Hall, which I mean, I think we both we all agree Cena Hall has really faded down the stretch, similar to Butler, not as steep as the trajectory, but I mean that team was losing momentum quickly. Okay. So uh what do we think about St. John's a nine and a half point underdog. It is their home court, but uh, I think there's going to be more UConn fans there than St. John's Red Storm, whatever you call themselves. Yeah, Dad. I mean, what was the UConn? I know, oh, I was, you didn't make the morning session, but have yeah. you got a sense of the UConn presence? Uh, now, I mean, they 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 split. I mean, after after that game, I didn't see really any UConn fans hanging around. But, I mean, I, I have to say UConn is going to uh, clearly destroy St. John's tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, I don't think any spread's big enough for nope. nine the Husky. Nine I mean, they just they elevate their game. Yeah. yeah. I'll I'll be on the other side of this one. I'll, I'll take St. John's plus nine and a half. Uh, I think they hang around. Uh Granted, my hang around theories have not gone very well so far in this week, but um, I, I think 
you don't want to start any fights or say anything negative to a UConn fan tomorrow at, at Marquette 84, make sure you don't say anything that you wouldn't want to uh, say to a child because they will take it the wrong way. Uh, but I do think that St. John's, I mean, it, they seem to be running or at least riding some sort of streak. Maybe Patina realized that uh, he has a little bit more depth than he thought. There are a bunch of names that are keep like going out there and making big shots for St. John's that I haven't heard about for a lot of the season. Uh, and who knew uh, St. John's and Rick Pitino ran off a bunch of players that are doing very well at other programs, but maybe he still has some talent on that roster. Where are we going next at Big East, Ben? Uh, next, we are going to Ohio State versus Illinois. Illinois favored by minus four and a half. Do we think the plucky upstart Buckeyes will be able to continue their momentum here? against a Illinois team that has been very shaky down the stretch, I would say. So at, at Mark 84, so we, we've seen Chris Holtman. He's uh, left this job, not by his decision, but he's now moving to DePaul in the Big East. Um, do you think the remnants of his program can get a big win against a very, I mean, I, I think Ohio State has to win this tournament to get in, into the NCAA tournament. So uh, do you believe in they can, I mean, Winning is different than covering four and a half points uh, at Marquette 84, but do you think that Illinois and their really, really porous defense is enough to uh, to stamp out that Ohio State fire finally? I I'm gonna I will pick Illinois to win the game. Okay, but you said it was four and a half. Four and a half. Yep. Um, I would take. Ohio State with those points. Yeah, so I'm interested because Illinois, to me, that their defense has been really questionable for a lot of the season. Ohio State, I mean, it, it's hard to argue with how well they seem to play at the end of each season. Uh, last season, they had a huge run that really kept Chris Holman in his position. Uh, I don't know necessarily. Clearly, it didn't work this year, but they had a great end of the season as well. Uh, at Big East Ben, what, what are you thinking about Ohio State in this four and a half spread? Because I'm, I'm leaning to the, the Buckeyes as well. Yeah, I mean, these are two teams that aren't – I mean, Ohio State was right there with Illinois at the start of the season, and then they just started Big Ten Conference play and started their, you know, swan dive. I don't think these teams are that different in terms of athleticism and in terms of star power. I mean, Illinois is comfortably on the 3-4 line. You know, they're not desperate. This Ohio State team is desperate. Debo's doing something right. Uh, um, I, I like the Buckeyes covering the four and a half. Yeah, I think they. I think there's a good chance that they win this game outright. Uh, so that four and a half looks very interesting to me. Where are we going next? Uh, so the last uh, game before we do best bets will be Baylor, uh, Iowa State. The game you will be seeing tomorrow. A game minus, seeing uh, tomorrow. minus one and a half, Iowa State. Yeah, so we we have an early Correct. number of of Iowa State. Uh, I think I had counted. We were we were literally in the stands. It was the late night game, so maybe some Baylor fans, extra ones, will show up. But I think I was counting, and I got to twenty three. Uh, Baylor purple, or excuse me, Baylor green. Uh, didn't really see any yellow. Hard to distinguish between Iowa State yellow and Baylor yellow, I guess. But not a lot of fans there. Um, honestly, really struggled with the Cincinnati. We're struggling for a lot of this game tonight. We're trailing for a while. And uh, I was kind of planning to leave until uh, it seemed like Cincinnati was going to be hanging around for a long time. So uh, at Marquette 84, do you have a pick on this one? Do you think that uh, the Iowa State seemingly Hilton South, as they called it? I saw a lot of the uh, little pull like uh, levers that that show something that said Hilton South in uh, in Kansas City of all places. Do you uh, do you believe that that? Baylor's stellar offense is enough to overcome a crowd and a really stellar Iowa State defense. I think what's going to impact this game are the rumors about their coach. Um, DJ possibly Altsberger? Going, possibly going, no, no, Baylor's coach going to Louisville. Scott Drew uh, leaving I, the program that he resurrected from the ashes that he literally took out of players or excuse me, coaches accusing players of being drug dealers and that, and trying to cover up a murder murder. Right. No, I, I think he, he probably would look at uh, Louisville as an opportunity to do this again. Um, I think, I don't know if he, there are murders obviously. there. What are, what are you saying? I'm just, I'm not sure. 
I think he <laughs> likes I think he likes to resurrect uh, programs that that have issues and Louisville obviously um is in a bad way right now. Not that I not think, that level, just strippers or whatever the, the culmination of that is, as opposed to murders and drug dealers and covering up. I mean, you know, Louisville All once sense. once proud program um is really hit rock bottom. So um I think that in a way that's behind the scenes. I think that's going to impact the play of Baylor. I'm gonna go with Iowa State uh winning outright. At Biggie Spin, what do you think? I like it. Uh first off, shout out the uh last interview of the Kenny Payne era. I don't know if either of you guys saw it where he uh lambasted Louisville fans for quote jumping off the Titanic. Oh boy. The program <laughs> was the Titanic in that alliteration. Um oh. I like Iowa State too. Um, I, I like I I like them before uh, those last juicy nuggets you guys added of the home, uh, the home crowd and plus these Scott Drew rumors. Um, I, I think Iowa State's defense is too is too good for Baylor's. Um, and then Iowa State Iowa State's a really good three point shooting team and they can just turn off like that and just go on runs. They did against Kansas and I think against. That, at Baylor zone, they're really going to be able to eat. Uh, shout out Monklevich, future Big 12 player of the year. Monklevich, yes, a Wisconsinite, which uh, I don't know how Marquette let him outside that that window, but, you know, I guess. They he were- would have been great. Yeah, he would have been great. Markegan, Markegan, Wisconsin. Dad, do you know where that is, Markegan? Well, there's Waukegan, Illinois. There's that, oh. a, there's, there's that a Waukegan, Wisconsin. Uh oh, here we go. Uh, so <laughs> Milan Momchilovich, <laughs> he is from Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Sounds like Milwaukee to me. Milwaukee, that's just west of Milwaukee. Mm, seems like they have mm. similar names. Well, so we made it to this, at, at least to this point of the show. It is late night with the Real Underscore Warner at Big East Bend and at Market 84 on the Need for Seeds College Basketball Podcast on the Betting Pitch Podcast Network. Uh, we'll start with at Marquette 84, even though it looks like you're potentially doing yeah. an Aaron AMC CEO. And just That's a nice hotel room. All over the place. Yeah. It looks nice. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I have low battery, but I think, I think right. it's charging. Yeah. Yeah. You will need to be on for 20 more seconds to give your best bet, and then we'll move on to at Big East Ben. Yeah, I actually, while you guys were chatting, I've actually been able to pull stuff up here, and I do have a best bet. I have two but I think I'm going to go with only um, you only my, have time for one before your best. Are, so it's my, my best, my best bet is the Michigan state Purdue game. Okay. Uh, it shows Purdue is um, favored by six and a half. Yep. That's what I see. And, and I um, take Purdue. I mean, that's, that's easy money, right? I mean, there's no way Michigan state is going to be close to them. You heard it here first at Market eighty four saying Purdue six and a half point favorites easy money. Uh, at Big East Ben, what do you what do you what are you going to call for your best bet on this episode? Friday, March fifteenth. Now here in the Central Time Zone. All right. Uh, again, me and you, red hot on best bets, Dad. If you hit that, we'll bring it back next week. Yes. Um, if I like, or we'll bring it back tomorrow. No, yeah, we're, I mean we're recording tomorrow, right? I, I um, do, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. My best bet is the Kentucky Wildcats minus three against Texas A&M. This line makes absolutely no sense. Uh, Texas A&M has been one of the biggest underachieving teams in the country. Yes, they did beat Kentucky uh, this season. That was at College Station before Kentucky really got going. And we're kind of sort of those newborn pups when it comes to freshmen. Uh, But this team has uh, molded into a battering ram. Reed Shepard might be the next Steph Curry. Then you got Rob Dillingham, just uh, Justin Edwards. Uh, like this team is so deep. Cal again. I don't think who knows what they're doing. The NCAA's they're going to kill these these underachieving Aggies. Uh, early action for Buzz Williams. I think Texas A&M still gets in even with a loss. So uh, I like the Cats here. 
All right. Well, thank you for, for tuning in for this episode of the Need Proceeds College Basketball Podcast, courtesy of the Betting the Pitch Podcast Network. If you're not a member of my Patreon, check it out, patreon.com slash real underscore Warner. If you're not following, subscribe to our, our program, make sure you do that on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify at Betting the Pitch. And if you're uh, not on YouTube, hit subscribe there. Or if you're listening on YouTube, hit subscribe yeah. there at the real underscore G Warner. Uh, and it, I guess it's time to sum this up in a one minute reel. So this is the real underscore G Warner. This is betting the pitches production of the need for seeds college basketball podcast. You just heard our special guest at Marquette 84. He gave out a uh, Michigan state fade Purdue minus six and a half uh, on this Thursday or excuse me, Friday, March 15th episode uh, at Big East Ben. He gave you a Kentucky minus three uh, and a very peculiar line in the SEC tournament in Cat Atlanta or Cat Nashville, however you call it. At uh, I guess against against Texas A and M, I don't know if we can call it a home game. For my best bet, I'm going to go with those Iowa State Cyclones, a one and a half point favorite. And uh, I just don't see. I didn't see. I'm in Kansas City right now, recording this live. I have not seen uh, more than 50 Baylor fans this entire weekend. Iowa State has shown up. They bought all the tickets that I tried to try not to sell for a lower price. So uh, it's going to be a big, big environment for Iowa State. And uh, I think they're going to cover that spread. Easy win at home or what feels like home, minus one and a half. And that'll do it for this episode of the Betting the Pitch podcast. Thank you for tuning in for the Need for Seeds College Basketball Edition. And we might see you tomorrow night, depending on how tonight goes and uh, depending on the level of sobriety, considering uh, all of us all in the same type of environment. Plus, we might get Marquette 84 back for uh, the championship game of the Big East tournament. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for coming in our, at Marquette 84. You can follow us all on Twitter, the real underscore G Warner, and of course at Big East Ben as we get ready for the next episode as we deep even further into college basketball's postseason before we get into the, and the March Madness brackets. That's easy for me to say. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>